Do the two of you create stories for the market? I know that's a big dilemma. When you make a movie, you know, you kind of have to consider a lot of things because um, you don't just make it for yourself. You have to consider the fans, what they like. You do think of what's trendy, but you know, you also know till you're going to finish post-production, whatever is trendy now, it's not going to be trendy in a year. So you kind of have to uh, almost take a chance. What we do lately is just kind of take a chance and do some things that we think they're original. They haven't been made before. It's not just trendy. Because if it's trendy, you just have to do it fast, and that's a machine, that's a factory, and we just don't do that. Other companies do that, that's great. We don't do that. So then we're just kind of going more on our guts, on what we know about the genre. We get inspired from various movies from different time periods, uh, what we know fans like, and uh, what we like to do to contribute. And like I said, you just sometimes just take a chance and see what people they like it or not, but you have to put something out there that you like and you hope other people will like. But we do always think of fans of other people. And you, know, you do think um, you want your movie to be easily marketed, to have something new and fresh and brings a new original concept. You, don't, you want it to stand out in the crowd because a lot of people are making movies, it's a lot of competition out there. So you don't want your movie to be one of the whatever new slasher movies or, you know, okay, it's zombie movies are popular. Okay, let's make one of those. We don't want that. We're trying to create whatever your budget is. Sometimes you have more money. Sometimes you don't. But you're trying, we're trying to do something more original and contribute and make it stand out. You do kind of, especially Brad is very good about like the tile. Make sure it hasn't done before. It's cool. It's new. It's fresh concept. Sometimes we come up with the artwork before the script is even finished, just to create something that, you know, we haven't done, we haven't seen before, and just makes your movie stand out. Because speaking of distribution and festivals, they want the things that stand out. It's easy, easier for them to market things if you know what you're doing and you bring them something more interesting and different. So a theme I'm picking up is that you, you like to do things that are new and that you haven't done before. You don't want to be regurgitating sort of the same thing again. No, because we started by doing that. And uh, you do a lot of programmers or things like that. And look, there are fun and you have to make a living and you try even with those to contribute things. But, you know, lately we're kind of like, look, uh, you know, we're not getting any younger and you just want to contribute more than, you know, just make a movie that is like 100 other movies. We're just trying to do things that are more interesting for us to explore um, that we haven't done before because, you know, okay, a slasher, it's good fun, but, and, you know, Brad is known for some slashers and everything, and I'm not saying I'm not going to do that ever again, but if I would do it, once again, I would try to, you know, break the tradition, come up with something different. Just... You know, just keep people guessing and also make it more fun and interesting than the same thing over and over again. I mean, you know, it's boring, I think, for everybody. So once you finish a project, how much time do you give yourself in between or you don't? Do you give yourself like a resting period to kind of rejuvenate or no? Because it must take a lot out of you. It one. does. It does take a lot out of us because we're like, you know, guiding a project for years. Um, ideally, that would be nice to have a break, but that doesn't always happen. Most of the time it has doesn't happen. Like right now we have high def coming out and we're already working on the next movie. So prepping different things, you know, um, so, you know, it just kind of happens uh, because, you know, at the same time, some projects are going to drag longer in post or something. So at least till you get to the point that you get them in the can, you're trying to get things going um, as much as possible, not let the momentum going either, you know, because things tend to take longer than you'd like to sometimes. So it's better to get on on it but ideally yeah that would be nice to have a bit of a break but that like i said that doesn't always happen 
it's not even if you're in charge or not it's not always you know up to you and every movie it's it's different has its own journey you know sometimes you know we used to make movies for distributors and we were doing that they had a release date set already so before we even shooting we knew one would be coming out so you really can't drag your feet to that nowadays we don't do that but in the same time we do kind of set ourselves some sort of deadline because otherwise things are never going to get finished um so with high def we had like a festival deadline it wasn't like no we didn't have to be like completely finished finished in post but at least get to a certain phase to be acceptable to present it to a festival because otherwise people can keep dragging things and you know um slow down the process so i think we all uh, need deadlines but yeah in an ideal work i w world i would like to have a few breaks in between definitely at what point do you think a filmmaker is ready to take on investors you know you're never ready you just have to just start to do it you know just just have have the chance um, to take the chance or try, you know, you can't just wait for somebody to let you do something or, you know, sure, you do have to be prepared. You can't just come out of film school and not have any experience and think you're going to, you know, get a lot of money to make a big movie or something. But I think it's good to work on sets. I think it's good to gather experience because when you get in a meeting with investors, they'll know that you know what you're talking about. And that, I think it's important. But um, I don't think you're ever ready. I think at some point you should just take a risk and just go for it and see what happens. Because I don't think it's good to wait forever for um, things to happen, you're never ready. Uh, people can, you know, think of, oh, I still need more money to make my movie. I still have some money that, you know, I got already in the bank, but I'm still, I still need more. Um, they always want everything to be perfect. And as much as you try, it's not going to be perfect, but it's better just to go and do it. And you learn from that and you'll have a movie than just wait for years to get a bit more money and you'll never make a movie. So I think it's better just to like sometimes just take the chance and go for it. I mean, when I first started to produce, I mean, was I ready? I don't know. I mean, part me up, I, I was, and I was, I thought I was, but I wasn't like overthinking it, you know? I already had some experiences, learned some things, and you just kind of have to go and do it. But, you know, when, you know, on our first day of shoot, um, you know, we scouted the location big time. It was a river going through it. All of a sudden, it was a lot of rain from our last scout, and it was a river going through uh, the area that we had to, like, and almost build a bridge to carry equipment to go to the woods we needed to shoot. Well, was I prepared for that? No, I wasn't, but you just sometimes just to kind of roll up your sleeve, and that's what's called filmmaking. You just kind of have to be very flexible and, you know, uh, learn how to deal with every situation. No, I was not prepared for that. It's not what I thought I'm going to be doing that day. But so what? You know, the movie got finished. So that's what it matters. And it makes for a funny story now, even if it was really stressful back then.